Well, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I'm going to tell you some stories tonight. I'm here for stories. <laughs> he was a comedian in another life. <laughs> you can tip me for that after the talk. Only if I get Of um, witnessing some things I haven't really shared publicly before. And I knew one of the greatest men who ever lived. He had the greatest power and the greatest humility. I watched him for a lot of years. I'm going to tell some stories about him. He was a modern-day Houdini. He came to America to bring the Coptic Fellowship because he said this country was Holy Land. He was buried alive over 5,000 times. My experiences preceding 5,000 burials. Read the book. It's right out here. I've got a series of books I want to I want to give to you because of their the greatness of them. Amazingly, he could stay underwater for hours, and he learned this all in the Egyptian mystery schools. <clears throat> Keep in mind, before Christianity was self mastery. And he was a personification of self-mastery. On the Ed Sullivan Show many years ago, remember the Ed Sullivan Show? I do. Remember? Anyway, he was on the Ed Sullivan Show. And he was on to show the powers of what he could do. And after all of his little annex, there was a bed of nails that Hamid Bey laid on. Ed Sullivan stood on his chest and Ed Sullivan weighed over 200 pounds. Power. Absolute power. Remember the, um, remember the flood here? Mm -hmm. How many people remember the flood that we had here? Noah's? Noah's Ark, yeah, Noah's Ark. Anyway, Nancy and I were in down in Tennessee, and down in Tennessee, we got rid of, we just got through with our annual conference there. Mm -hmm. And my secretary said and called and said and said, there's three inches of water on the floor of the Coptic Center. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. I said, you got to be kidding. Oh, no, man. Oh, yeah, you better get home here. <laughs> so I drove in, we drove into a gas station, and we we're filling up with gas, and I noticed a license plate right ahead of me. And on the license plate, it said, 23 Bay, B-E-Y, and 23 means to a pneumologist, I am. Mm -hmm. From the other side, he created that situation. Think of it, I am Bay. In other words, I got your back, buddy. Oh. And we came up here, and I had a, I was, we were just devastated. Well, we, everything turned out fine, but one of the jokes I told People came in to hear my little talk about what happened here. They walked in and I said, better walk in two by two. This is Noah's Ark. <laughs> <laughs> Left a nice tip at the door, though, when I said that. You know. <laughs> the next one came when I was, we were in Florida. And we used to go do a conference at a spiritual church down there. And they were having a workshop. And I decided to go. And I um, said, this guy is really amazing. He's really fantastic. And so we, we came in. And so what he did was we had some um, card tables in the room. And he explained to us that we were going to be able to lift those card tables off the floor and walk around the room. Yeah. And I said, oh my god, this guy is Looney Tunes. <laughs> There's no way. <laughs> so we got around the we got around the card table, and there were four of us, and we had it on the table. And so all he, all he said, all you have to do is say to your mind, lift, lift. And I said, oh my God, this is <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to walk out of here. I'm going to go through this. And he, I'm gonna, this guy's going to be, I'm going to be embarrassed for him. <laughs> Who is that? I lift, lift. Lift, and I was in the lift right away, so I knew it. 
left, left and I looked out of the corner of my eye and there was a table with four people walking around the room with the table off the floor. No kidding, man. And by the way, one of these people was Carl Franklin, by the way, oh, yeah. who was down uh, there. Oh, yeah. God. And finally, we were able to, because we started to believe <laughs> that <laughs> the other people were doing it, that we could do it too. Yeah. And sure enough, unbelievably, we yeah. lift the table and walked around the room. And here were five tables off the floor walking around the room. How about that? Wow. Man. How did this happen? Yeah. I, and what Hamid Bey used to do, I believe. I believe. I believe. He did this during his talks. So basically, in our minds, after I saw Carl left, you know, I thought, oh my God. Think of it. How did we do this? Because this great psychic instilled in our mind that we were going to be able to do this. But until we saw somebody else, we couldn't do it. Yeah. That is really important to all of us. And I think this is why Hamid Bey did all of his miracles, you see. If I can do it, and I was trained in Egyptian mystery schools in Egypt, if I can do it, you can do it. Hmm because he was into something very wonderful and very fantastic. Mm. Because what he taught me was humility. And when he was eight years old, and he was taken off the streets of Cairo, he was trained by the great masters. Would you turn your child over to the great masters for many, many years? Obviously not. So what happened was he had to go out in the street and pay. Probably right in the book. Yeah. Read it. Yeah. And his parents were very upset with, with the masters and said, what, what, what is it with our son out begging? We are teaching him humility. That is a lesson for all of us. No matter how successful we are, we are here to think of others first. And that's what Hamad Bey did. He thought of others first. Next story. I was speaking at a conference in San Antonio in 1970, 1997, just after Elvis passed. And uh, a woman came up to me and said, are you kind of an Elvis fan, Presley fan? And Nancy and I had just seen him sing, and he wasn't in very good shape three months before he passed. He passed in 1977. And she said, you want to talk to a woman he used to talk to at night, early in the morning? I said, sure. Yeah, I'd love to, because I'm really an Elvis, kind of an Elvis Crossway fan, where he's been yeah. kind of an admiration. Hmm? <laughs> what? I think we've got every CD he ever, he ever issued. Just amazing. So I talked to her, <laughs> and she told me that he used to call her early in the morning, 1 or 2 a.m., mm. because he was in metaphysics. He belonged to Self-Realization Fellowship. He was a yogi. And guess what he was going to do? He was going to go on the road and sing all of his spiritual songs and leave the great arena and travel all over the country because he was going to be a yoga minister. Mm. However, the colonel had something in his contract. Mm. It said, if you got to make a move, I have to approve your move. And he said no. And Priscilla was not into, his wife was not into metaphysics. Mm -hmm. He was a powerful man. A couple of months later, I got a book in the mail. It said, Elvis After Life. It was a story of different individuals where Elvis appeared to them after he had passed, mm -hmm. he created a physical body or an illusion of a physical body mm -hmm. and appeared to many, many, many people. Cool, Think of it. Elvis Presley, probably the last person we would expect to have this kind of power. And he was trying, he was trying to show us something. How do you create a physical body? How do you create the illusion of a physical body? That is power, absolute power. 
Are we supposed to do that? I don't think so. But this is, these are the kind of stories that have something that is very, very, very powerful. If you had a chance to, I think you still get the book, Elvis After Life. Let's talk about us. You know what power vibrates to? Christ. Remember, Christ is not a person, Christ is a consciousness. P-O-W-E-R, 77, opening of the seven male chakras and the seven female chakras. So we're learning how to be powerful in this lifetime. One of the most powerful words there is, is H-A-B-I-T, habit. If we create habit, positive habit, we can change our lives. Now, that's what we're doing in terms of self-mastery. And that's what happens when we start to do a habit. Diet, meditation, exercise, that's the same old three words I use all the time. But once you start a habit, continue it one day at a time, if it's positive. Like cutting a lemon in half, cutting a lemon in half, half a, squeeze a half a lemon in one glass of water, the other half in a glass, I've done it for 40 years because it's healthy. Because one thing we use with power is to create health and to do it every day, every day, every day, every day, every day. Exercise, the same thing. And I've told the story many times, working out the Y for years and, and people were having a New Year's resolution and mm -hmm. they were gonna start working out and you've heard me talk mm -hmm. about that. And boy, the, my gosh, the, the, the old guys club when we were there, and then we had all these people for about 10 days, and then they're gone. Because <laughs> one of the things about, and one of the great powers is, is when you fail to do something you said you were going to do, pick yourself up, dust yourself off, forgive yourself, and start all over again. That is power. Because what we are trying to do is gain self-respect. The body says, respect me. Make me healthy. You are in charge. That reading was fantastic, by the way, honey. Because it really describes what the power of the mind can do. But we've all failed. Yeah. And then when we fail, we condemn ourselves. Say, oh, if only I wouldn't have done that. Well, start picking yourself up, dust yourself up, and start over again. And then you gain that self-respect that is so important in life. Because we have all failed. Everyone in this room, including me, has failed at things. But how many of us have picked ourselves up, dusted ourselves off, started all over again? Probably many of you have. But it's time to do it again. Are you exercising regularly? Are you drinking six to eight glasses of water a day? And so forth. That's very, very, very important. Next. What are the three things we are here to conquer in this or on this earth? Money, sex, and power. Mm -hmm. All of them are wonderful. But those are the things we're here to analyze. And very rarely do we hear anybody talk about money, sex, and power. Because it's, it's so wonderful and so fantastic. I want you to think of it. I'm not going to dwell on it. I don't, want to, I don't want to go into it. But basically, these are the things we have to do to really get in contact with why we are here. We are here to master ourselves so we can graduate from planet Earth, the great school. Now, I broke a code recently. I broke a code, a very important code. I'm a code breaker. Being a planetary neurologist. Because I've told you many times, I in 1221 of 2012, which is the beginning of the Mayan calendar, I realized that that date means the light of the world, right? And I've been praying every day for years, basically. And at the end of this, we're going to, we're going to pray again. But what I realized with this one, it just occurred to me about a couple of weeks ago, The light of the world vibrates to the number 215. Hmm, 
215, what's, what's that number? It's February 15th. Hmm. Remember, each day is a, is a conception day and a birthday. Remember? As above, so below. Then project it nine months ahead of time and you come to the, da the date of 1115. You know what that means? God consciousness. Uh huh. God consciousness. We are here to become God conscious. Here's some, uh, here's some Egyptian gods here, by the way. Yep, here they are. I'll read a few for you. Set, happy. Atan, Isis, Osiris, Ra, Adam, Mat, Kefri, Hathor, Sobic, Sekhmet, Shu, Geb, Amon, Ptah, Anubis, Horus, Newt, and many others. We are here to become God conscious. If the Mayan calendar that started on 1221 to 2012 means a lie of the world, and I'm in the process of writing a book on it, it's getting near completion here, but I just found something else to put in it, that we have to become God consciousness. Humility, love, service, become a co-creator with humility. And I go in the book quite a bit about how to do in this diet, meditation, exercise. Remember, when you're dealing with the self, when you're dealing with diet, meditation, exercise, it is selfish totally selfish love for you, for you to grow up healthy and happy without P-A-I-N. Yes, but when you are a G-O-D, according to Egyptian mystery schools, it is about everyone except you. We are twins, and it ain't easy to switch from selfishness <laughs> and humility, mm -hmm. homeless find homes, hungry find food, sick and injured or healed, or peace, or unity, or sharing, or prosperity. The earth is our family. We've lived in all those countries. All colors, all denominations, all languages. We now live in the greatest country on planet earth. United States of America, and by the way, July 4, 1776, means the world messiah. July 4th, 1776. Is that a coincidence? I don't think so. <laughs> and now we, we are to become gods in humility, love, and service. And we're going to end this tonight. We're going to sing, we're going to say these prayers together like I do every day. Before I meditate and pray, I read this every day. Because you don't have to call me and say, oh, by the way, uh, I'm praying today. Uh, let's say it's February 20th. Uh, what does November 20 mean? No. We have to have faith that these goals that we plant are going to be manifested on planet Earth. That's going to affect all people of all nations of all religions. And that's why we incarnated. It had, to be, it had to be with an air sign. It had to be with Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. And we're in the age of Aquarius, not Aquarii. <laughs> I've heard me say that before, too. Uh -huh. What I ask you to do is just say these prayers every day. Just say them. They are seeds of power a power for all people, of all nations, of all religions. All men and women are created equal. And you are a co-creator. And that's why you incarnated. It's one of them. And when we incarnate, 
the earth would be changed. They say, my God, what happened around the earth? Right, what, uh, 2000, 2020, 2000, wow, what happened to this, what happened to this world? Mm -hmm. You won't know because you don't, don't know your past lives. Mm -hmm. But this is a calling. The Bible calls it an initiation, where you are being given a tool. Here are the seeds. And now I want us to stand, and we're going to end my talk of reading the prayer. Almighty Mother, Father, God, I pray for healings on all levels, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual, in all families, in all hospitals and health centers, in all doctor's offices, psychologist's office, and AA meetings, and addiction counseling sessions, and everywhere else where healing is needed and desired. I pray for all politicians to use in all circumstances. Bring the Ten Commandments to national and international expression. I pray that all of humanity remember that all children worldwide are symbolically our children, and all people are our brothers and sisters. I pray that men and everywhere are empowered and experience and quality of men. All men and women are created equal. I pray that slavery is eliminated from planet Earth. I pray that government laws be for the benefit of the people, by the people, and for the people. The hungry find food, the homeless find homes, and the sick and injured are healed. I pray that all nations share the mission I pray for all religious and spiritual leaders to pray daily for all good to manifest on earth and to come to seek the manifestation of this peaceful soul existence and cooperation of religions. I pray that businesses succeed in all nations. And as a result of national and international business successes, everyone everywhere by meaningful, creative, life sustaining work. I believe in the end of 2016, the worldwide economy comes by success. We believe. We believe. Cool, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.